This is just malicious chatter and disrespect. The royal family has nothing to fear from Meghan's new disaster. Hello and welcome back to Royal Family News Channel. There are always stories circulating claiming that Meghan will publish a book. And now, in this cut interview, he's implied that he has more to say, even than what he said on Oprah, and that he never signed an NDA. So I guess Meghan thinks she can make a lot of money pretending the royal family is racist. But if he announces it to the whole world, what will it look like? Now, maybe she won some people over by playing the poor beleaguered black girl, but that's really a position that Meghan can't really maintain, because of all her mean talking and also the way she disrespected the late queen. Finding Freedom has previously covered Meghan's stay at Kensington Palace. And employees talked a lot about cheating through the book brokers, by Valentine, low one question, I have is exactly how much time, did she even spend with William and Catherine? And let's forget about other members of the family. We already know that the family does not interact like a normal family would. Everything is performed through personal secretaries and diaries. The idea that somehow Meghan Markle had the Queen on speed dial is ridiculous, and although this upset Harry to no end, his PPS managed to block his calls and prevent a personal discussion or meeting until the Sandringham summit. Meghan was also banned from this meeting, so everything she says is just hearsay. This is similar to Harry's account of the misunderstood conversation about what his children might be like. So I want to follow Lady C.S. interpretation of the whole racial issue. Princess and stressed that the collision between two cultures is not sustainable. And he talked about the impact it would have on all children. Let's keep in mind his parents' culture shock and subsequent divorce. But that's still a bit off topic. When the Queen was still alive, Meghan always took great pains to apologize for her many criticisms. So now that the late Queen is dead, will Meghan Markle feel free to stab her in the back? And if not the late queen, perhaps the current queen. Well, that would be a big mistake on his part. King Charles has always had Camilla's protection at heart. And she fought so hard to be accepted by her family, but also by the general public. She endured Harry's attempts to throw her under the bus for supposedly sacrificing him on the altar of PR. But I don't think Meghan would do the same thing. So what dirt does he have on the king? H. G. Tudor often says is a narcissist, but that's not the same as Megan. It doesn't have to be grandiose. After all, he is the king. However, he craves validation and admiration a lot. And apparently, Megan recognized it and knew how to play with it. And he doesn't like making choices that would make him unpopular with anyone who sides against him. Now he can fire people when he thinks they've let him down. And he can be very stubborn sometimes, but I don't see how he could have done something directly to Meghan that she could actually use against him. Perhaps she will claim that he was so cruel and cold to tell her not to come to Balmoral when she was just a daughter-in-law. And we all know he just wanted to go there and get his picture taken. Both Meghan and Harry have made negative comments about the monarchical institution, and Harry was really chasing the fly, the bee and the wasp. He described them as Machiavellian, which would actually mean they are more impressive narcissists than Meghan. But these are men you don't want to upset, even if Harry tried to annoy the Queen's late parliamentary private secretary in this whole protection saga. But above all, he does not need to chase after King Charles' parliamentary private secretary, Sir Clive Alderton, aka Wasp. Buckingham Palace leaks a lot if they want to, and they would probably want to publish their story sooner if they expect there to be problems in the future. Think about that bullying report the Queen had in a safe. This could resurface. But the main target of Meghan's complaints is of course William and Catherine, the Prince and Princess of Wales. So, if Meghan actually writes a book, she will dedicate an entire chapter, or maybe even two chapters, to torn jeans and barefoot walks and roast chickens, and how uncomfortable she was with all Catherine's formalities. Or will she blame Catherine for making a face when she shared the lip gloss with her? 
Or maybe he'll talk about Catherine having baby brain. Is he going to talk about how they dress for dinner? Is she going to devote three chapters to the bridesmaids' loose dresses, clingy or not, and how Catherine, among others, made her cry that one single tear from her left eye? A narcissist is not against using the truth if it benefits him. So maybe Megan will talk about how she got slapped for volunteering to take care of all sorts of things, because of her genius and insider knowledge. Maybe she'll talk about all those people who told her her outfits were totally inappropriate for the occasion. Or he'll say how unfair it was to have to make all that stuff free. Or will she explain how wrong it was that she was given gifts in the first place? I mean, who knows when we'll get to that. And if the truth doesn't really help her, don't worry, she'll just make something up. He will devote several issues to his mental health. She will talk about being trapped in a situation where she had no control and how painful it was for her. We won't really hear about depression, I don't think. Instead, I think she'll talk about her frustration that people weren't listening to her and doing things her way. Will she recount the night she told Harry she wanted to end things, and then later they went to the Royal Albert Hall to see Cirque du Soleil? I mean, Harry's face is the picture of misery. Well, his face is the Cheshire cat smile. But you know, he'll come out with some kind of dirt that he'll promise to dig up, and that way he'll get a quick deal for more books. All right guys, now it's time to talk about some of your opinions. Let's talk about some of the comments you left in the last video. Kane Charles showed how harsh he was by rejecting his wayward son, Harry. Your comments were great as always, so let's talk about some of my favorites. First, a comment from Kitty Fan. Harry is many things, but unfortunately, adult is not one of them. This is definitely not an adult kitten, will he ever grow up? Oh, I don't know. I wouldn't hold my breath. And then Grace, oh Harry, you have to follow the rules too. Congratulations to King Charles III. Harry doesn't believe in rules, don't you know? He married Meghan Markle. And then we have Adeline, hope Charles will stay put. Me too. I mean, it's been pretty stable so far. Let's hope it continues like this, and he doesn't give in to their ridiculous demands. And then we have user ET2. I'm so happy that the royal family has completely cut off contact with Harry and Meghan. This won't change as long as Harry is married to Meghan. I will never forget Meghan's disgusting reverence, mocking the late queen and everything she stood for. I completely agree with you. I don't think they'll abandon them anytime soon. I mean, not after everything that happened, including that bow. I agree with you, this has to be one of the most disrespectful things I have ever witnessed. Next comment, I don't really know how to pronounce the username, but it's something a gum. Harry reportedly filmed the entirety of Windsor Castle for a Netflix documentary. Thank goodness the royal family is wiser than Harry. May God save the king. He would have done it. I mean, if Harry thought it would make him some quick money, he would film absolutely anything. No matter how private it is for his family, and then Kitifan, well, yes, Harry did it. At least the Carlisle Hotel in New York. Harry was warned at least six months ago that he would have to give 28 days notice before he could travel to the UK and be given security and accommodation. Harry arrived in the UK two days later and stayed with friends. Well, that seems about right. He was probably testing his family, and I'm glad they stood up to him. I'm glad the palace didn't give him accommodation at the last minute. It was time for Harry to follow some ground rules. The next comment comes from Vicky. What I really don't understand is why Megs is so determined to denigrate the royal family and destroy everything Harry holds dear, when the title means so much to her. Inevitably, they will be stripped of these titles and then what will she do? Then they will have nothing left. He will have even fewer and will disappear from our radars. She'll drop Harry like a hot potato 
and he'll then have to crawl across the ocean looking for his family to help him. You're right, Vicky. What will he do? You see, I don't think Meghan Markle is capable of really thinking about the future. Now, Meghan Markle is a planner and can be quite cunning when she wants to be, but I still agree with you, it doesn't make sense for her to go after Harry's family like that, when she needs these titles to stay. Relevant. And then Jan says that because the Queen kicked her out of England and she was so angry, she did the Oprah interview and never stopped. It's obvious that Meghan Markle has no intention of stopping until she's ready. She doesn't care if no one wants to hear what she has to say, she will just continue to let her mouth do the talking. And then Dawn said, yes, you're right, Dawn. I'm sure he's already on the hunt, but will he succeed? I do not believe. I mean, maybe he'll find someone. But I think it would have to be very, very, very old or just very out of touch, maybe a person with dementia who doesn't know what's going on. But even then, I hope this man has a family to protect him. And don't hesitate to subscribe to our channel Royal Family News for more updates in the future. Thank you very much for listening. Goodbye and we will come back to see you in the next videos.